Welcome, my name is Robert Breaker, and today I want to tell you about how to get saved, what the Bible says about how to be saved. In Hebrews 9.27, the Bible says, And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. All men will die someday. The Bible tells us that everyone must die. But where will you go when you die? Where will you spend eternity? Heaven or hell? Smoking or non-smoking? Have you ever thought about this? Well, the Bible tells us how to get to heaven. And it says we must be saved from hell. So to be saved means you're saved from hell and you go to heaven when you die. In 1 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 4, the Bible says, talking about God or Jesus Christ, who will have all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. The knowledge of the truth, that means there's something you need to know in order to hear to know how to be saved. So what I want to do today is give you the knowledge of the truth and how to be saved. John chapter 3 and verse 15 says that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have eternal life. God wants to give you eternal life. Would you like to know how to have eternal life and be on your way to heaven? Acts chapter 13 and verse 38 says, Be it known unto you therefore, men and brethren, that through this man, Jesus, is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins. God offers forgiveness of all of your sins and eternal life. But it's not by what we do. It's by coming through the word of God and coming to Jesus Christ and what he's done for you. First of all, let's look at some verses on the Bible about how to be saved or how to get saved, what the Bible says about that. First of all, you must know that you are a sinner. Some people think they are good and that they deserve heaven. They think, I'm so good, God has to open the pearly gates to let me in. But what, is, what does the Bible say? Does the Bible say that there are some good people? A thousand times no. In Romans chapter 3 and verse 10 we read, As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. That means nobody is good enough to get to heaven. Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So no matter how good you may think that you are, God sees you as you really are. God sees you as a sinner. Why do people die? Because of sin. If you weren't a sinner, then you'd live forever. But everybody dies. And as we started this, it says, It appointed unto man once to die, but after this the judgment. When you die you will stand before God to give account of yourself to God. Romans chapter 5 and verse 12 says, Wherefore as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin. And so death passed upon all men, for all have sinned. All men sin. All women sin. When the Bible says all men, it means everyone that's ever been born are sinners. And because of that, they die. So salvation is not something that we can earn by works. Rather, it is a gift of God. How do you receive that gift? Well, the Bible teaches by faith. By faith are we saved. Ephesians 2 and 8 and 9 says, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Salvation is not by what we do. We can't earn our way to heaven because we're not good. There's none righteous, no, not one. It's a gift that God offers. And what is that gift? Romans 6.23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So salvation is not of works, but rather receiving eternal life by faith. Faith is how God chose to save us today, not by works. Galatians 2.16 says, Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ. Even we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by the faith of Christ, not by the works of the law, lest, for by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. You can't get to heaven by your works. God won't allow a sinner to come in to the pearly gates. So God offers a free gift of eternal life. But that free gift is only through faith, not of works. Romans 4, 5 says, But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. But the question is, faith in what? The answer is faith in the gospel. 
The gospel is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verses 1 through 4. And the gospel is that Jesus Christ died for our sins. I'll read that to you. But let me go ahead and write it up here, the gospel. I hope you have a Bible, and I hope if you do, you go through these verses with me and look them up. See what the Bible says about salvation. Because this is the most important thing in the entire world. Your never dying soul, where you will spend eternity for all eternity. Where will your soul be for all eternity? The Gospel is in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 4. And as we read 1 Corinthians 1 through 4, we, we see what it is that God did for us. It's not what we do that saves us. It's all what Jesus Christ did for us. We read in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, Moreover, moreover brethren, I declare unto you the Gospel, which I preached unto you, which also you have received, and wherein you stand. By which also you are saved, if you keep in memory what I have preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that He was buried, and that He rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. So the Gospel is that Jesus Christ died. He died on the cross, shedding His blood on the cross of Calvary. The gospel is that he died, was buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. But I left out a few words. The most important words. It says, for our sins. Why did Jesus Christ die? He died for our sins. Jesus Christ died in our place for our sins. He paid for your sins. So you don't have to go to hell and pay for them for all eternity. So the gospel is what Jesus Christ did for you. Jesus Christ died in your place for your sins on the cross of Calvary. Paying for your sins so that you don't have to go to hell and pay for them yourself. He is the sacrifice for all sinners. And His sacrifice is clearly seen when He died on the cross. The old saying is, Jesus Christ loved me this much as He spread His arms and died. In 1 John 4.10, we read about the love of Jesus and His sacrifice. 1 John 4.10 says, Herein is love, not that we loved God, but that He loved us and sent His Son to be the propitiation for our sins. A propitiation is like a substitute. He died in my place. He paid for my sins. 1 John 2.2 2 says, And not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Who did Jesus Christ die for? The entire world. He paid for the sins of the entire world. 1 Peter 3.18, we read, For Christ also hath once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit. So Jesus Christ died once, and that one death was for our sins. Not just my sins and your sins, but the sins of the entire world. Jesus Christ died for everyone. What for? The verse says that He might bring us to God. The way to heaven is through the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ because Jesus did that for our sins. And if you come and accept the gospel and trust the gospel, it's to bring us to God. It takes us to heaven. That's how we get saved. So Jesus Christ is the one who saves and salvation is by Jesus dying for your sins. But not only did He die, how did He die? He shed His blood for you. It's through the blood that Jesus Christ shed that it paid for our sins. In Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 22, the Bible says, And almost all things are by the law purged with blood, and without shedding of blood is no remission of the sins. God demands blood for sins. In the Old Testament, God told them to sacrifice animals. And in the Old Testament, those animals were sacrificed, and that sacrifice of animals is what gave them forgiveness of sins. Well now we have the New Testament and in the New Testament it's Jesus Christ who is our sacrifice. Today we don't go and sacrifice a lamb or an animal. Jesus was the sacrifice. In fact when Jesus came John the Baptist said, Behold the Lamb of God which taketh away the sin of the world. That's why in Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 12 we read, Neither by the blood of goats and calves but by his own blood he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. Jesus died to redeem mankind. 
1 Peter 1.18 says, For as much as you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, died in my place for my sins and your sins. And now in the New Testament, when we go to the New Testament, it talks about Jesus Christ. It tells us that forgiveness is not from the animals that they sacrificed under the law. Salvation is not through the blood of a goat or a lamb. Salvation is through the blood shed by Jesus Christ. That's why Colossians 1.14 says, In whom we have redemption through His, Jesus' blood, even the forgiveness of sins. 1 John 1, 7 says, In the blood of Jesus Christ, His Son cleanseth us from all sin. Salvation is by the blood of Jesus Christ. He shed His precious blood for you. And the question is, what have you done with Jesus Christ? To be saved, you must trust that blood that Jesus shed, shed for you. Romans chapter 3, verses 23 through 28 are some powerful scriptures about salvation. In these passages of Romans 3, 24 through 28, we read, Being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Salvation is by grace, not by works, by believing. Romans 3, 25, Whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in His blood to declare His righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. To declare, I say at this time, His righteousness that he might be just, and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. Where is boasting then? Is it, ex it is excluded. By what law? Of works? Nay, but by the law of faith. Therefore we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Jesus Christ is the righteous who never sinned. The sinless one, the just, died for us, the unjust, the sinners. And by so doing he proved that he was God who died and shed his blood. And by rising again, he proved that he was God. Jesus Christ was God manifest in the flesh. That means Jesus is God and that God loved us enough that he died for our sins. And then it says, where is boasting then? It is excluded. We can't boast and say how good we are. We'll never compare to how good God is and how good Jesus is. So we can't boast in ourselves and in our works we have to boast in Jesus Christ and His finished work, what He did when He died for our sins. When you come to Jesus and believe what He's done for you and trust in the blood, you are saved and on your way to heaven. You have forgiveness of sins, the Bible says. Ephesians 1.13 says, In whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. That means when you are saved, you receive the Holy Spirit, you are born again. Salvation is so simple. It's simply trusting and believing in what Jesus did for you. Because He did all this for our sins, in your place, for you. 1 John 5.13 says that you can know that you're saved. It says, These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life, and that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. Do you know that you're saved? You can. What did Jesus do for you? He did everything necessary to save you. He died in your place for your sins. He paid for your sins. Now you can say, I don't want that, and go to hell and pay for your sins for all eternity. That's what happens if you don't accept Jesus as your Savior. Or you can take the free gift that Jesus offers of eternal life by trusting in the gospel, trusting in His shed blood, and then God saves you and gives you eternal life. Believe what Jesus did for you. Trust the blood sacrifice of Jesus Christ and you'll be saved and on your way to heaven. If you got saved watching this video, I'd love to hear from you. You can look up the uh, website at the end of this video and go there and find my email address and send me a, an email let me know. This is what all of life is about, is finding Jesus and being saved so that you don't go to hell when you die, you go to heaven with Jesus Christ. This has been a video on how to get saved. Are you saved?